timing of photography and welcome to this episode, another episode where we're going to talk about flash photography and there's Megan with us today. Hello Hi. Megan. Hi. <laughs> um, in a previous episode where we left off, you saw how easy it is to actually achieve the perfect exposure right on the very first shot if you actually measure your light using a flash meter like this one. It doesn't need to be this one. Uh, this is a Seconic um, L358. I can show it to you. I hope you see it good. You don't need to have this one. They are much cheaper version of flash meter. But the point is, use a flash meter and you get your exposure straight on par on the very first shot. What's the next step? Well, the next step is, what if you actually use more than one flash? How are you going to measure every single flash? that you have in your setup. And first, why would you want to have more flash? Well, we're going to put aside the idea that you will need more flash to lit your subject because one flash is not powerful enough. The reason why I want to put this aside is because there are some rare occasions, um, especially when you shoot outside, and I know that might sound so weird that you shoot outside with flash to some of you, but we'll see this. But it, it does happen sometimes when you try to uh, use your flash and you have the sun uh, to fight with and so you need a lot of power and you may need one, two, three, four, five, eight, eight maybe different uh, flash going like this one, like a speed light uh, all positioned in the same direction to your subject and it's just that you want that extra power but truth is, if you actually need that many flashes at the first place you may want to consider upgrading your setup and getting a pure a studio stroke because that's going to be more powerful. So that's the reason why I'm putting it aside. So why would you want to have more than one flash? Well, you would want to have more than one flash because life is in three dimension, right? And so in real life, I'm able to actually go around Megan like this, and I like going in circle around Megan. And photography is in two dimension, right? It's like a drawing. And because photography, your job as a photographer, you need to capture life, you need to capture what you see, and we have the chance to see in three dimension. And using more than one flash will enable you to actually lit different sides of your subject and get that subject out of the background, for example. Or, because you're leading your subject on one side, it's gonna have shadow casted on the other side and you wanna bring a little bit of light on the other side. So that's the reason why you would want to have more than one flash. And we're going to see today and how we actually achieve this. It can be time consuming. I'm not going to go for the most fantastic portrait here. I just want you to guys to understand how you measure the light. So first thing first, what we're going to do is I've got my uh, 5D Mark III and unlike last time, um, I've got much bigger lens, a much better lens. Uh, this is the 70-200 to 2.8 IS Mark II. Some of you have seen that I was selling my lens on eBay and Facebook and so on. Well, this is the result. So I've upgraded this. So although I could actually go down to 2.8, I don't want to shoot in 2.8 and you will see why. But this is my camera setup. We have three um, speed lights uh, and I've got my uh, softbox here, uh, and the reason why I wanted to show you that softbox, and let me bring it to you. I'm hoping you guys can actually see better. What you can see here, as I said the last time, the flash is actually pointing inside the softbox and not towards the outside. And that has some advantages, and if you guys want, I can do a review of that softbox against a different uh, softbox system. So, we have that softbox, this is going to be our main line. That's why we call it the key light. That's the light that's going to be the most powerful one to lit our subject. So, we're going to start, we have Megan again on the fantastic stool that is my Pelican case, Pelican case in Europe, if you're interested. I'll do a review of that uh, soon. I keep saying this, but I'm going to do a review. I haven't done it, it's been six months, but I definitely need to do a review of this one. So, um, I'm just putting this uh, diffuser here, uh, just to soften the light a little bit more. And, we got to choose where we want to put our light. So basically the background is going to be that black wall with a curtain there. So I'm going to have Megan pointing her knees in that direction, right? So actually, give me the big boy. Here we go. Just put the gun on, on the floor like this. And what we're going to do, and it's, bear with me, this is not the way of doing it. This, that's where your creativity comes in. 
You can do anything you want, but because we have the camera here, I want to make sure that none of the lights are actually going to be in your line of view throughout the exercise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have that light going this way. You may wonder why that light is actually going in 45 degrees. Well, the truth is, we try to mimic the sun, and the sun is always above our head. And when it isn't, it's dark. And it's very rare when actually the light is going horizontally. So that's the reason why I don't want it facing horizontally. It can be creative. Watch out! It can be creative uh, to have it this way, but this is not what I'm going for uh, today. So um, if you were to look at me, I just want to position the light. And I'm going to be shooting somewhere around here. Uh, actually, back here. I think I'm not in your way this way. Yes. I'm going to be shooting here. If you look in that direction, good. So, I want to have the light like this, pointing at me. The first thing we're going to do, just like the last time, we're going to measure our light. So to do that, I'm actually going to use my radio trigger. And this is A, this is flash A. The reason why I always set my key light to flash A is because I start with my key light, and A is the first letter of the alphabet, duh. So, that should be pretty easy to remember. And remember, if you have more than one flash and you think, oh, setting up my light is a nightmare and I end up spending an hour setting up the light, which never happens to us, right? Um, it's because probably you do it wrong. You try to set up all your lights at once and that's not how you want to do it. The way you want to do it, focus on your main light, your key light. You set that up first. So, I use my um, flash reader. And I'm going on my group A right now, and I set it up to F4 and see what I'm going to get. Can you look? Okay. It says 2.8. I could do with 2.8. I've got the lens for it. But because I want to use more than one light, I don't want to shoot at 2.8. So I'm actually, I'd like to shoot at F4. So to have F4, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank up the, um, the, the power of my flash. And for those of you who may be skeptical, here is 2.8, all right? So 2.8, and I'm just going to increase this. So I'm going to half power. So now I'm at half power. I'm just going to take another measure. F4. There you go. You may be wondering, Tom, why would you actually crank up the, um, the, the, the flash power and don't just simply increase your ISO? That would be a very good question. But the reason why I don't want to increase the ISO is because the ISO will increase the brightness in everything. The ambient light, there's a tiny bit of ambient light. You can see here, uh, it says 90% right here. So that means that my flash is covering 90% of the light falling onto me. Means that there is 10% of light. So there is still some light. And if I want to bring the ISO up, that's going to bring the whole scene up. And I don't want this. I only want the flash to be uh, more powerful. So we've got F4, that is good. What I'm going to do. What I could do is I'm, I could actually take a shot. And actually, I'm going to do this. Normally, I don't necessarily do it. Um, well, it's not actually true. I would actually do a shot here just to make sure that my light is in the right direction. So it's not about setting up the power of the flash. It's about making sure that the, the direction of my light is the way I want it. So here, and I want you guys to see the evolution that we go through. So right now I'm going to take a shot, Megan, when you're ready. She's not always ready. Um, let's take, let's see this. And do you want horizontal, vertical? Vertical, let's go vertical today. Okay, and... Okay. And as you can see, she was on your screen and I can see it here on, on Lightroom on the computer. The, the exposure is perfect on Megan. But, what do we notice? Well, the background is black, and that's good, because this is what, exactly what I wanted to. And there's some shadows. It's quite nice, you look cute, um, but for the sake of argument today, what, what if you actually wanted to add a little bit of light? We don't want Megan to be totally flat. Remember, it's all about dimension here. So what if I could actually bring, while Megan is looking there, what if I could actually bring a little bit of light so we still want some shadow, some lower tone, but we just want a little bit of light so it's not so abrupt. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the second flash. And this is actually uh, the ROG, um, what is it called? I forgot the name. It's Light Bender. That's how it's called. I'll do a review of that because I really love this thing. Um, and so what I'm going to do, can you look exactly like when I was taking a picture of you? Okay, good. So now I'm actually going to position this in Megan's direction. I wish the tripod, the light stand could actually go lower, but it doesn't. So I'm just going to have it here. It doesn't really matter because all I care about is Megan's face. So I'm not taking the whole body. So here, and I could actually bring it like this. Okay. So now I'm going to take a reading of that flash. And I don't remember if I said it last time, but you notice that the flash meter has a dome, the lumosphere, right here. And the reason why we have a lumosphere is because it enables us to catch the light almost like if it was the human space. So it's very practical, especially once you, you want to, and we'll talk about ratio, but when you want to know the ratio of the light comparing to the, to the ambient light, well, it will capture the light from the flash, but also capture the light around. And the luminosphere is great, but when it comes to comparing the light from one flash to another, you want to retract that luminosphere, just like this. What you could also do is turn that flash off. You could do that. Um, and in fact, let me, let me do it. Um, so I'm turning it off right now. And now I'm going to the group B. That is going to be my group B. And I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to start at F16. So how much power do we want? What kind of F value do we want for this flash comparing to this one? That, the answer, my friends, that will depend on your creativity. There's no rule for it. You could do whatever you want. However, this is my key light. This was giving me F4 on Megan. I certainly do not want something that is going to be more powerful than my key light, because then it becomes my key light. So I'm at F4. What I'd like to do is I'd like to go at 2.0. 2.0, if you think of it, F4 to 2.8, that's one stop. 2.8 to 2.0, that's one stop. And so I want my fill light to be two stop lower than my key light. As I said, there's no rule, it's just I'm the detector here and that's what I want. So two stops of light less than this one. So let's, and I don't need the dome retracted anymore because I turned off this flash and I'm just going to trigger it. We're very close. It says 2.2. I can try to uh, bring down one third of a stop here. Uh, but it's never going to reach 2.2 this way. So what I want to do at 2.2 is I just need to bring it a little bit closer, like this, just a tiny bit. Actually, further, not closer. I don't want 2.8. I want 2.0. So like this. Let's try again. 2.0. Yeah, 2.0, guys. Here we go. We've got 2.0. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my A and turn it on. And I just want to do a sh one shot for you guys so you can see the difference. So again, if you want to take exactly the same pose, let me bring the screen so you can remember the pose you had. You see it? Okay. And you ready? Okay, so what you see now on your screen is that we definitely have the shadow, right? So we see that the key light is coming on Megan's face on this side. So I'm not going to talk about right, left, but for you, when you guys see it, it's definitely going to be on the left side. The left side is brighter than the right, but the right side is not as dark as it used to be in the previous image. So that's, the, that's how it was before. This is how it is now. So we still have some shadow, right? We still have it, the neck is well defined, and that's what I'm always after. Megan has a fantastic face, very angular, and I like it, and uh, we want to have that shadow cast under the, uh, under the chin, so it, it really defines the age of her, of her face. Now, we've got a perfect black background here. 
But the thing is, as I said, it's all about dimension. And her hair, we're quite lucky because Megan is kind of blonde, dark blonde. So she, she pops out a little bit. But what I'd like to do is having her more coming out of um, the black. And so to do this, you would add the third light. I could change the color of my background. I could do this. Uh, but what if I actually want my background to be black? So to do that, I'm going to add a third light. And I have it here. What can you mean? So what I'm going to do is, Megan, you look exactly like if I was taking the shot. And I'm going to use that flash, and I'm going to point it in, um, in the direction of her head, basically. And I don't need to go very high, uh, because the higher I go, then it would be harder for me to adjust it. But I think that's going to do it. Uh, maybe the angle is not quite right. So let me just change the angle a little bit. Here we go. That should do it. And now I'm going to measure the light. So how am I going to do this? Same way as before. I could simply use the luminosphere. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable group A, group B. So let me disable this. Group A is disabled. Group B now is disabled. And now this is going to be group C. So group C, I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to start. How much do I want? Well, I want some light. I'm not feeling the shadow. I want some light. I don't necessarily think that two stops of light is required. I think one stop under the main light, that should do it. Sometimes you may want that light to be a little bit stronger, depending on the effect that you're after. But here, I want something soft. I just want a little bit of light, a rim light. That's how it's called. So you have the key light. That's just the primary light. You have your fill light. That's going to you know, uh, unclog the, uh, the shadows. And then you have the rim light. That's going to do a nice rim around Megan. So here, I think I want to do, so we have F4, F2.0, so two stop. This one is going to be F2.8. So let's take a reading, and I'm just going to go at, let's imagine F8, just to test it. See, I'm trying to go away from it. So it's giving me 7.1. So 7.1, it means that my flash is actually pretty strong right now. 7.1, it's halfway between f8 and 5.6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, reduce the power of it. Here it says I'm one eighth of a power. So you see, one eighth of a power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down. So 116, that should bring me closer to 5.6. 132, that's going to bring me closer to 4. And then one more, 164, that should bring me closer to 2.8. So let's take another reading there. And what is it? Louder! 2.8. Says 2.8, guys. All right, okay. So we've got 2.8. 2.8, 2.0, F4. Let's Turn that on. Ooh, get it caught here. So I'm going to my group A, and I turn it on. Going to my group B, and I turn it on. And let's shoot. Look at the light like you did before. All right. So you guys see it now, right? You see the difference? So let me bring up the before and after. So, and I'm going to show Megan as well at the same time. So that's now. That's before without the light. Mm -hmm. So a clear change. Mm -hmm. And you see, that's how you go through uh, all your lights. So just a quick one, just so you guys see it quickly. I am turning off group C. I'm turning off group A. Uh, group B, sorry, and I'm just having group A on. Let's try again. Stay like this, Megan. Okay, so you guys see the shadow. We have a nice exposure on Megan. On the right side of Megan, Megan is looking towards the light. It's perfect. We have a nice catch light in the eye. Now, group B, I turn it on, and I don't change anything. 
Now we see the, the shadows on the right have been um, brought back a little bit, but we still have some shadow, nice uh, nice chin, uh, nice jawline, I really like it. We really see a little bit of um, lower tone on the right side of her face, and now the final point is we bring the flash C, the background, the rim light. And now it's one. Is it this? Is it one? Yeah. It's wow. So um, this is it, folks. All right. So I'm not gonna go um, further today in this episode. I think it's pretty clear. Uh, if you want to set up your flashes and you have more than one, tackle one at a time, and uh, and then you have it. Uh, in future episodes, what we'll do is we'll see that you don't need to have three flashes, right? There's people nowadays, I know flashes are cheaper, right? Uh, they are cheaper and cheaper uh, as the years uh, go by. Uh, you don't need three flashes. You could do amazing work with one flash. And as a matter of fact, what I'll do in the next episode is I will use only one flash and we will see how one flash has different effect on Megan's face. We will see how a shadow, how it plays out. So that's the program for the next um, episode. If you have any questions, don't forget to ask in the comment section. Don't forget as well the blog on my website, tommigotphotography.com, in the education section. You have the link in the description. You can also post comment there. In the article you have everything that we've done here, you have the pictures much uh, bigger. You can really compare these things and uh, I'll give you more details if I think of, of them. And until next time, this is Tom. You can say, oh, and don't forget to give me a thumb uh, if you like the video, especially for Megan. Please give a thumb for Megan. She loves them. And until next time, this is Tom. You can say, if you like it, well, capture it. Give me five. Hey guys, just one thing I forgot to mention. You may be wondering, but Tom, you mentioned f4, f2.8, f2.0. What aperture did you actually use on your camera? Well, the aperture is f4 because all you care about is the brightest. So as long as I expose for my main light, which was set at f4, then it's perfect.